Hi, my name is Cheryl O'Donnell. I'm with USDA APHIS PPQ in San Diego, California. I'm an area identifier there. My discipline is in entomology, and I'm a specialist in Thysanoptera systematics and taxonomy. Today we're going to key out another specimen, a mystery specimen that was uh, presented to you on a slide. And if you'll put that slide into your microscope, we'll begin to key out using the key to the second instar larvae of Therpidae of the Western Palearctic region by Vierbergen et al. And we're going to begin on page 109 with couplet number one under key to the larval instars of the Thysanoptera families of the Western Palearctic. Couplet number one asks about the antennal segment five and whether it is at least half the length of an antennal segment four. So let's focus in on that character. Again, we can count up the segments from the base, from the base of the antennal segment. So we have one, two, three, and four. And you will likely have to focus down a little bit to see the segments in focus. <clears throat> so there's four, five, six, and seven. And the couplet asks whether five is at least half the length of segment four. There's segment four, there's segment five. So I would say no, it is less than half the length in this specimen. So we would go to the second part of couplet number one, where antennal segment five is less than half the length of four, segment four. That takes us to couplet number six on the same page. And the first part of that couplet asks for the abdominal sternites four through eight with one pair of CD. So let's take a look at the abdominal sternites. And as you can see on my slide, we can count the number of CD on the abdominal sternites. You have one, two, three pairs. One, two, three. And this is the dorsal surface of the abdominal, abdominal sternites. So the first part of this couplet six does not match what we have under our, our specimen. So we go to the second part, abdominal sternites four through eight with three pairs of CD. Let's see if the rest of this couplet also agrees with our specimen. Abdominal segment nine postmarginally with four or five pairs of CD. So let's go down to the bottom and look at abdominal segment number nine. This is abdominal segment 10 and this is nine. And we have one, two, I'm on the dorsal side, so I'm now gonna focus towards the ventral side. Three, and there's the fourth one. So you're counting all of the CD on, on that sternite. So our answer here is that this is a larval stage two of the Thripidae family. So we're now going to go to the part of the key just under that that says key to the second instar larvae of Thripidae of the Western Palearctic. And we'll start with couplet number one. Antennal segment number seven, greatly elongated, seven to ten times longer than wide. So we'll focus on the antenna again. All right, so at the base of the head, we have one, two, three, four, five, six and seven antenna segments. So we are trying to look at number seven right here. Is it seven to 10 times longer than it is wide? 
And we can say no, that that is not the case for this specimen. The second part of this couplet is segment number four, clearly separated from segment five. And I would say it's not extremely clear there, but you can tell that there are four, segment four and segment five. So since we're not fitting in this couplet, let's go ahead and try the second part of this couplet. Antennal segment seven, two to four times longer than wide. Does this fit? Yes. That's about two times. Let's double check on another characteristic. Segment five, broadly attached to the segment number four. Again, yes, it is broadly attached. So we are fitting in in this couplet, which will take us to couplet number nine, the dendrothrypini, the sericothrypini, and thrypini. Couplet number nine is on page 111 in the second column. This couplet asks about abdominal turgites four through seven. And that's also shown on figures 49 and 50. It's asking whether those turgites have scattered, almost circular, small plaques visible as punctures or at magnifications of two to 400. So let's take a look at the abdominal turgites. So we're looking for abdominal turgites four through seven. So let's count one, two, three, four. And what kind of structures do they have on the body? Do they look like circular patterns or punctures? I would say no. These look like plaques, which are outlined in the next part of the couplet. Abdominal turgites four through seven with transverse rows of plaques, which lack microtrichia or have postmarginally up to six micron long microtrichia. We don't have any microtrichia or there might be some down here in the lower end, but these are plaques, elongated plaques. So that takes us to the key for thrypanae, which is couplet number 29. Couplet 29 is on page 119 of this key. The first part of this couplet asks about the abdominal turgite 10. So let's focus on 10. Turgite 10 is right here. And the couplet is asking whether the D1 CD are spine light or thickened at the base. The alternative is whether they are bristle like. So D1 CD on this are right here. And those are bristle like. And those types of CD are shown in figures 106, 148, 160, 174, 180, and 196. This points us to the couplet number 44, which is found on page 121. This couplet is focusing on the dorsal CD and whether they are short. And the second part is a second choice is whether they are long. So let's take a look at the dorsal CD. I would say that these dorsal CD are long and not short. So we would go with the second part of couplet 44. In addition, let's just double check and look at another characteristic. And I will read it. Most dorsal CD long, pronotal CD D6, usually longer than 25 microns, if in the range of 20 to 25 microns, then abdominal segment nine, without sclerotizations, and segment eight with D3 CD longer than 25 microns, or if D6 CD less than 20 microns long, then antennal, antenna basally with a distance clearly greater than the width of the antennal segment three. So let's tease that apart a little bit and take a look at abdominal segment 10 
and whether it's sclerotized or not. So focus in on abdominal segment 10. And you can see in this image that both 9 and 10 are sclerotized by the coloration, this dark coloration here on 9 and the dark coloration on 10. Now with abdominal segment 8, D3 longer than 25 microns. So let's take a look at D3 on segment 8. And I would say that it is longer. Here's D1, D2, D3. You can see that it's a little bit longer than this one out here. So we are fitting into that category. So this couplet and this choice for this specimen takes us to couplet number 51 on page 125. The beginning of this couplet, the first choice is pronotal CD D7 longer than 50 microns and intersense cone on antennal segment 4, usually longer than segment 7. So let's first take a look at the pronotal CD. Focus your specimen on the pronotum. And as a reminder, we're looking at D7 CD, which is right here. Is that longer than the 50 microns? And the other choice is shorter than the 50 microns. I would say that's shorter than 50 microns. So I'm going to say that our alternative on 51 is, is our choice for this specimen. But let's double check and look at the sense cone on antennal segment 4 and see if it's not more than 2 thirds the length of 7. So you can see antennal segment 4 is right here. And the sense cone is that large based CD that you see right there. And it's fat at the bottom, which indicates it's sense cone. And that is about 2 thirds the length of the antennal se segment 7. So we are making our right choice here on this couplet. All right. We have moved to couplet number 56. This couplet is asking about abdominal segment number 9 and the posterior margin with enlarged spine-like teeth. Now this, an example of these enlarged spine-like teeth is shown in figure 117. And I would say that we do not have that kind of character here. We have the alternative example in this couplet, which is abdominal segment 9 at the posterior margin without enlarged teeth, but teeth subequal and up to 9 microns long or absent. So essentially, these are relatively about the same size. They're not overly large as compared to figure 117. So that takes us to couplet number 72. Abdominal tergite number 9, dorsally with two campaniform sensilla, separated by one and a half or less times the distance between D1. So let's orient ourselves. D1 is right here. The campaniform sensilla are shown right here. And what it's asking is whether those two campaniform sensilla are separated by one and a half times the distance, or whether they are separated by more than one and a half times the distance of these two. So I'm going to say that it would not be the alternative question here. It would be the first part of this couplet, where we separated by 1.5 or less times the distance between D1. So there's your distance. And those are about the same as the distance between the D1 and CD. And pigment, pigmentation on tergite 10 is various, whereas the other alternative is with sclerotization extending at least to the dorsal sensilla. So tergite number 10, let's put the sensilla in focus as well. This is various because it does not extend to the campaniform sensilla on the dorsal side. So that couplet takes us to couplet 73. 73 asks whether the abdominal segment number 2 has a spiracle or not. 
So let's take a look at abdominal segment number two. So orient ourselves. One, two, and we do not have, actually we have one and two, and there is no spiracle on abdominal segment two. And you can focus dorsally and laterally and ventrally to see those structures, and they are not available. So our choice again was whether it was absent or present. It is absent. So let's double check our first part of this couplet, which is in agreement with our specimen so far. Segment 10 with pigmented band, cephalad, usually not reaching the campaniform sensilla. We agreed on that on the last couplet. So our couplet is agreeing with moving forward with couplet number 74. 74 asks about the abdominal segment number 9 with a band anterior reaching the D1 CD. So let's take a look at that. Abdominal segment nine with a band anterior reaching the D1 CD, but not cephalad, as in figures 147 and 148. So it is reaching the D1 CD, but it doesn't seem to extend past that. The alternative is whether that segment is without sclerotization or with the band reaching anterior of the DCD. And that is not the case. So that couplet will take us to couplet number 75. Part one of 75 asks whether this segment nine between D1 CD with row of microtrichia as in figure 147. This row right here. And we can say, yes, that is, we are in agreement with that. Let's just check to make sure. Is the pronotal CD D3 and D4 with the length more than two-thirds the length of D2? So let's look at the pronotum. Let's orient ourselves. We're talking about D3, D4, and D2. D2 is here, D3, and D4. The question is whether D3 and D4 are about the two-thirds the length of D2. And I would say yes, we are in agreement with that. This keys us out to Thrips Tavisi, and that's what this specimen is.